Hey guys, so here we go, back again. All right, so we're kind of starting something a little bit new, um, but here's what we're going to do today. So we had the test on Friday, and we're going to be moving on to the last two things that we need to, or I guess it was a quiz on Friday, but we got two more things that we're going to talk about, and then we'll be done with this chapter and this first little module here in this first couple weeks, okay? So you see the objective on the board. Today isn't too bad, but... Here's our objective, let's copy it down. So our objective for today is I can classify each number based on specific characteristics, all right? A lot of big words here, maybe a little bit confusing, but it'll make more sense when we get into it. But that's our objective for the day, the goal. I can classify each number based on specific characteristics. Copy that down for me. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about what this means. Let's talk about what this means a little bit, okay? Here we go. So I want you to copy this picture down for me too. Make it big, make it about a half a sheet of paper or so. So you can give yourself plenty of room. Copy that down for me. Okay, now let's start adding some words to it. So in math, and in this first week or two, we've talked about a bunch of different kind of numbers, but now we're going to talk about the specifics of them. What does it mean? I had a question in one of my classes on, Friday, on Thursday. We were talking about integers and whole numbers. So we're going to add some words to that and talk about why they're a little bit different, but why that they're pretty similar. Okay? So when I look at this picture right here, I want you to think of a couple things. So it's a whole classification thing, right? So if I was going to classify you, I might say that you are a boy or a girl or whatever, right? And then from there, I might say that you are 13, but you're still that guy or you're still that girl or you're an eighth grader and then you go to Widow Springs and then you're in my class, all right? And then you're virtual. So you have those different classifications and each one gets a little more specific. That's kind of what this diagram is supposed to represent. So in all of math, we have two different types of numbers. And we're only going to talk about one of them today. When you get into high school, you'll talk about the other kind. But copy this on your diagram. This whole diagram is talking about real numbers, okay? So real numbers. There are non-real numbers, but like I said, you won't get to those until you get into your college or high school classes. Now, within real numbers, there's two different sections, just like my diagram. I have the left side and I have the right side. Let's talk about the left side first, on the left side. So the big overarching, all of things included, is we're gonna talk about these as rational numbers. I'm gonna abbreviate. Rational numbers. And for those of you that may not know, the opposite of rational numbers, copy this over here, are E. rational numbers, okay? So we have rational and irrational. I wish, wish, wish so much that they would make these different words because they're kind of hard to understand. So when I say it, sometimes I may say rational with an R, irrational with an I. But those are the two different types. And as far as you're concerned, these are the two biggest distinctions for today and for the first test or whatever. Rational and irrational numbers. Now, inside of rational numbers, there are two different parts, okay? There are two different parts. So if we get a little more specific, if we get a little more specific, this inside circle in to jizz. Okay, spelling is my least favorite thing. So to get a little more specific, we have integers. And to get a little more specific, we have whole numbers. Now these are pretty similar, as you'll see as we get to it. All right? So I got integers and I got whole numbers. Copy those down for me. So I have my chart labeled. Let's talk about some examples, and then we can come back and fill out some, some numbers, okay? So... With that being said, I'm going to flip to the next screen, but I'll put it back up here in a second. So everything's rational. Integers is a little more specific. 
whole numbers are a little more specific. So write these for me on the left side or draw an arrow out of your diagram. If you have room, you can put it inside the definition. Okay? When I say whole numbers, what that really means is if I think about a number line, I'm going to go with all the numbers to the right of zero. Or another way to think about it is our positive numbers. Okay? All of the numbers that are positive on our number line and the traditional number line that we think of. So like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so on, right? So if I go back to my chart, I could put, a, put in a few whole numbers. For example, 11, 33, the square root of 9. Why would the square root of 9 go into there? Well, the square root of 9, when I simplify it, is just 3. So that makes it a whole number. Okay? Now, if you haven't wrote down integers yet or you want to on the next page like I have, integers. So now integers are all of the numbers on the number line. Okay? So these are both positives and negatives. Okay? So these are positives and negatives. All right? Positives and negatives. So if I go back to my chart, and I want to fill in some examples. Let's get a different color. Fill in some examples there. So now my integers could be, right, 33. Could be 97. But could also be negative 8, negative 14, or even, um, I don't know, negative 123. So it's the positive and the negative numbers. Okay? Now in the bigger box, let's talk rational numbers. So not only rational numbers are our positives and our negatives, but here is where we get to what we talked about last week with decimals. These are our decimals. The ones that end, terminating, and the ones that repeat. Anything that can be wrote as a fraction. So rational numbers are our positive numbers, our negative numbers, our decimals, our fractions. So if I add some back to my chart that we haven't included already, so all of the ones inside the circle are still there, but then the rational numbers, maybe I have three-fourths. Maybe I have 0 0.13 with a line over it. Maybe I have four and two-thirds. Maybe I have, um, let's see, 0 0.13. 89. Maybe I have negative 0 0.45. Okay? So anything that can be wrote as a fraction um, or a decimal that ends or repeats is an example of a rational number. So everything on that left side is a rational number. Integers are rational numbers. Whole numbers are rational numbers. Now let's talk about irrational numbers. Okay? With an I. These are a very specific type of problem, okay? Irrational numbers. A lot of people think of these as, my definition is, write this for me, numbers that never stop, okay? Numbers that never stop. Numbers that go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We did some of these last week. What was some of these that we did? We haven't talked about it maybe too much, but the first example is non-perfect squares, So anything that's not in our chart, square root of 7, square root of 10, uh, square root of 103, okay? So our non-perfect squares. So I might put square root of 7, square root of 10, square root of 13, our non-perfect squares. Another number that goes on and on forever and ever that people like to think about a lot of times is pi. Okay, that's a ratio, 3.1415 dot, 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 dot. Okay? Does that kind of make sense, guys? Okay, let's keep going then. Let's keep going. All right, we did that. We did that. All right. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to write all of the names of the numbers that apply to each. Okay? Okay, guys, now that we know all the different classifications of our different
different, uh, different shape, different numbers. Let's go ahead and label them. All right. So let's start with number nine. Number nine, or the not nine is the number. All right. So nine. Let's talk first. Is it rational or irrational? So the first answer is going to be that it's rational. Now, where else does it fit in? Okay. Technically, it is an integer as well. And technically, it is also a whole number. Okay. So if I look back at my chart, right, it'd fall into all of these three categories. Nine would come right here. Nine would be right here in the middle of my diagram. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Oops, too far. Okay. 17.84. So is it a decimal that goes on forever and ever? Nope, sure is not. So that makes it rational. And what else doesn't make it? It's not an integer, it's not a whole number, it's not regularly on a number line. So I could call it a terminating decimal. Okay, terminating decimal. Square root of 11. First question is, is that one of our perfect squares? The answer is no, it's not a perfect square. Which if it's a non-perfect square, it's a decimal that goes on forever and ever and ever. So we call this irrational. Okay? Last one here on this problem, on this page. Okay, it looks kind of funky. It looks it has a square root. That's not good. So let's change it. The square root of 81, though, is a perfect square. So if it's a perfect square, I know I have 9 on top. On bottom, it actually simplifies the 1. Okay, so now I can get to my classification. So it's rational. It is a integer. It is also a whole number. Two more. All right, 12 or 14, what do I have there? I have a fraction, right? Which makes it a rational number. Okay, is it an integer? Nope, it's not a whole number either. What about 121? It looks like a square root. Is it one of my perfect squares? You betcha, so I know that it equals 11, which makes it rational. A whole number, because it's positive, and also an integer. Okay? All right, guys, we're going to get some more practice with that, but that is all for today.